the zeros of a quadratic function. To find how many zeros there are, do you remember using the discriminant last year? So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to show you some little tricks on how to find the discriminant and what it means, how you can tell how many zeros there are going to be, and then we'll do some examples. It's going to be a short lesson. I've actually already filmed this once, but the video wasn't on, so I have lots of notes already prepared today. Okay, so let's take a look at what I've written here. I started off by explaining how a parabola can sit on a coordinate plane and the way it sits, how it tells you how many zeros there are going to be. So if you have a quadratic that's sitting way up here or down here, this one being concave up, remember this saying, concave up, past the cup, concave down, why the frown, right? Okay, so if it's concave down, that means A, this means A is less than zero, and this means that A is greater than, well, less than, yeah, less than zero, A is greater than zero. So it's concave up, concave down, positive, negative. So if it crosses in two places like this, or it can come up and just kiss the x-axis here and go right back down, in which case it would have one zero. So the discriminant, which you learned last year in grade 10, is found underneath the radical sign in the quadratic formula. When you talk about the discriminant, you do not use the radical sign. You just say, oh, d equals b squared minus 4ac. So you're just pulling this out. That's where you find it. Do not use the radical sign. It's not right. This is all it is. This is it. That's all, the discriminant. If the discriminant is less than zero, you will have no real roots. Why is that true? Well, because if you have a negative under a radical, you can't take the square root of it and get a real number solution. So we say there's no real roots if the discriminant is less than zero. If the discriminant was equal to zero, you can see that automatically that would take this out of the equation put it this way, and you would have minus b over 2a. That's all. So that gives you one answer. The plus or minus is what's giving you two solutions, right? You're adding and subtracting something and then dividing by 2a. So if b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero, you have one root. And if the discriminant is greater than zero, then you have two real roots. You have two real roots because you have two solutions, minus b plus this, minus b minus this, and both divided by 2a. So then we had a little chat by myself about what if the formula was in vertex form? What if the quadratic function was in vertex form? Now, you don't need to use a discriminant. The discriminant would require you to expand this first, right? You'd have to expand it because you need a, b, and c. I don't have a, b, and c here. I have y equals a h minus x minus h squared plus k. I have vertex form, the vertex form. But the vertex form gives me the vertex of my parabola and the a value tells me if it's concave up or down in this case because it is negative. So I can make a very quick sketch of this parabola, minus 3, 5, concave down, and I know for certain that it would have 2 roots, two real roots. So looking at this equation, the vertex is 1, 2, and the a value is positive, so that means concave up past the cup. So here's my vertex, 1, 2. I drew it concave up, and I know that it will not cross the x-axis no zeros, no real roots. And subsequently, the last one is where you have one real root. You actually have one double root. It's called a double root. And it's called a double root because I actually have two answers of two for this. Because if I wrote this out, you'd have this, right? So I'd say I have two, two roots of two, which really just means one single root. So um, that's just a translation of the function. 
on the x-axis so you could have it over here like this right you can have all sorts of them but they only touch the x-axis at one spot okay so that that's pretty basic this is an easy lesson so how else can you find how many roots or zeros you have well you could factor and factor the quadratic or use a quadratic formula and see how many you get but that's so much more work than just using the discriminant so here's a type, a typical question that you would have in your homework and most likely on one of your unit tests, the teacher is going to ask you to find a value of K so that there's one zero, one zero. And they give you this. So K in this case is representing B, right? So I should write over here. This means that B is equal to negative K. It's right here. That's B. A is 1, that's my A, and this is my C here. C is 3. I start by making a statement. I know that for 1, 0, the discriminant has to be equal to 0. And I made a little happy face, and nobody was even listening when I did that. So I read out the discriminant. D equals B squared minus 4AC. I plug in my values. B is negative K. Don't forget the negative. Negative K squared minus 4 a is 1, C is 3, so I get K squared minus 12 equals 0. Sometimes people have trouble seeing that. So I have K squared minus 12 is equal to 0, right? If I just brought this over here. Or K squared equals 12. When you take the square root of a number, you get plus or minus in your solution, root of 12. And then I said, oh, we could write this as a mixed radical because that's what we've learned how to do. And a mixed radical means there's a perfect square in this 12. And there is. There's a 4, right? It's 4 times 3. And when you multiply radicals, you can split these up. That's the same thing as the root of 4 times the root of 3. And the square root of 4, of course, is 2. So this is the value that I would use into K to get zero for an answer. So you can go back and try it. So let, let's test that just for fun. So the discriminant is going to be b squared. Let's use a negative one. b squared minus 4 times a times c. So if I squared this, that would give me 4 times the root of 9, which is 4 times 3 is 12, minus 12 is equal to zero. Hooray, hooray, we're so smart. So we found if I use plus or minus, because if I put in 2 root 3 here, I would still get 12, right? So I want to show you this on a number line. I'm sorry, I wasn't showing you all the, the math, but I'm sure you were listening. Okay, let's put it on a number line, Ooh, like this. This is going to be 2 root 3 over here. This is going to be minus 2 root 3. So what would have happened if the question said, I want there to be no real roots. So this is where you have one real root, right? This one or this one? This one or this one gives me one real root. So that one and this one. But if I want no real roots or two, let's do the no real roots first, and we'll put the other one over here, two real roots. Okay, so how am I gonna figure that out? This is, put it on a number line first of all, okay? That's gonna really help you a lot. And now I'm gonna say, what if I picked a number between here and here, and I plugged it into my discriminant? Would that be um, less than zero or greater than zero? So let's pick zero. Zero is always a great number to pick. Or let's say one. Or minus one. So let's, let's use one just for fun. I'm going to plug in one. So if I plugged in one here, I'd have one minus 12. That would be negative. So in this zone, or if I put in zero, I would have had negative 12. Or if I put in one and a half and squared it, it would still be negative. So in here, the discriminant is negative between here and here. 
So if I'm between these numbers, that means I'm like this, right? Uh, k is our value, sorry, k, 2 root 3. So if k is between minus 2 root 3 or 2 root 3, there are no real roots. Okay, so what's what happens, so that means like this, right? It's like me drawing a number line like this, an inequality. So between here and here, open circles means you don't include those points. So anything between minus 2 root 3 and positive 2 root 3 is going to give me no real roots. The real root answer, and sometimes your teacher will ask for all three of them, why not? Just as easy. So if I picked a number out here, so that's not including this point, but going this way. So open circle like this, open circle means you don't include the point. So I don't want to include 2 root 3. Because if you include 2 root 3, then 2 root 3 would say where it's equal to 0. And I don't want that. So if I go this way, or if I go this way, those are going to be the places where I have two real roots, right? Because let's say I picked a number out here. Let's say I put 4. Let's choose 4. 4 squared is 16 minus 12 is greater than 0. So in here... D is positive. And it's also positive out here. So how do I describe that? Well, I would have K has to be greater than 2 root 3. Or K has to be less than minus 2 root 3. So if you're given a question where you're asked to find where there are no real roots or or um, no real roots, or you have two real roots, or no real roots, it's always easiest to find where's one zero. Do yourself a little number line, and then check points on either side and in between. So where you have your zeros, or the values that give you the um, one solution, you want to check in between those two, and you want to check on the outsides. So there's your solution. Two real roots is out here. No real roots, let me find another pen here, no real roots is here, and one real root is plus or minus 2 root 3, and that's finding how many zeros, finding a k value. You're going to see it in your homework, so take another look, make sure you understand. Subscribe and let me know how things are going. Bye!